back in the book of Ephesians for our walking through the word verse to verse Bible study. Uh, uh, on our Thursday night is a topical study. Sister Rachel from Mississippi. Good to see you, girl. Uh, good to have you on tonight. So be praying and helping us pray uh, about the guidance for Thursday night. Thursday night is a topical study. We've been studying the power of a seed. And we're almost through with that study, just a few more weeks, and we'll be pretty much through with that study. So we're really seeking the heart of God on which way to go exactly with that study. And so uh, <clears throat> uh, solicit your prayers. It's Joanne Gillis. Good to see you, girl. Uh, appreciate you joining as well. But if you will, please like and share and uh, let folks know that we're on tonight. So we're going to dive into the truths of God's word tonight. And Holy Spirit, we pray tonight. Holy Spirit, give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word that we may apply and know you and know your word and know the nature of God and who we are as a believer and apply that in our lives. So Holy Spirit, anoint our ears that we might hear and anoint our hearts that we may have wisdom to apply the truths of God's word in our life that we may walk victorious in Christ Jesus, in Jesus' name. So, amen. Ephesians chapter 1, we begin tonight in verses 15. Uh, we're going to try to do 15, 16, 17, and 18 tonight. Now, a topic of these five, I think there's five scriptures here, is, is entitled the knowledge of God, the knowledge of God, knowing God, knowing the knowledge of God, knowing who truly who he is. Amen. Because until you get to truly know who he is, you'll never be able to discover truly uh, what he's done for you and who, what he's, who, what he has created in you. Amen. And so this is a very, very powerful few scriptures here that Paul embarks on to the, to the church in Ephesus to help us to understand. So let's read verses 15 and 16 and then we'll kind of go a little further. Verse 15 says, wherefore I say, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and the love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you in verse 16, making mention of you in my prayers. Now, there's a couple of things here that I want to just highlight and just kind of speak to just a few moments in verses 15 and 16. So a couple of things that stand out in verse 15 is very important. First of all, I want to say is that that the church had now caught the Apostle Paul's attention because of their lifestyle and actions of life as being believers. Amen. And he says, wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, in other words, their faith, uh, they were living and walking in faith in such a way that it, they were leaving the powerful testimony I mean, uh, of, of their belief and their trust, their faith in Jesus Christ. In other words, when you truly put your faith in Christ, it begins, begins to open up and revolutionize your full understanding and who you are and how you live. Amen. And so Paul was saying, after I heard of your faith, in other words, their faith in Christ was so profound. It left such a, 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 a residue. A, a, a impact, a man that Paul had heard about it. And, and, and the challenge of the question that the Holy Spirit kind of made says, who has heard about your faith in God? Amen. Your faith in Christ is your belief motivating you and your faith in Christ motivating you in such a way that it brings an action in your life to leave a testimony. Amen. A witness. Amen. Of conversion, the witness of regeneration, the witness of grace, the witness of mercy. Amen. That we can share through our lives and through our words that our faith has moved us and changed us. And it is all through, amen, our relationship in Jesus Christ. See, one of the important things you must understand is, as being the ambassadors of Christ, God has planted you in arenas of your life to be an impact. Amen. God's never put you in the arenas of your family. You were born in the family that God created for you. You're in your right order. You're in your right place. And it is for the glory of Christ. Amen. And, and, and we, the church, has lost 
oftentimes has lost our effectiveness because our faith does not does not uh, motivate us. See, many believers are motivated for many different wrong issues or or, or different uh, benefits. Praise the Lord. But our faith in Christ should be so strong and so energetic and so powerful that it impacts our lifestyle. Amen. See, a lot of people say, I believe in the Lord, but their life is not supporting the truths of who Christ is. Amen. And praise the Lord. And so I want you to be encouraged and know that, that the church in Ephesus, Paul's writing, he says, I heard about your faith. Amen. See, we hear all, we, you know, bad news travels fast. Praise God. Good news. It takes it a while, but truth will always stand. Praise the Lord. And so our witness of Christ, our lifestyle change and what God's done in our life should be impacting others. And this is the thing that it really kind of stuck out with me in verse 15. And he says, you know, by, because your faith is so strong in the Lord, it affected you in a positive way in the latter part of verse 15. And a love until all the saints. In other words, now their faith in Christ changed them in such a way that now they are loving the saints of God, loving the people of God by actions, by attitudes, Amen. And by lifestyle. Are, are y'all hear me tonight? See, love is an action word. Praise the Lord. Love cannot be contained. It's kind of like grace. Grace is so big and so active. It cannot be contained by one word of description. Uh, and so, so it is with love. And Paul tells us is because of your faith is so strong and impacting, it has motivated you and changed you. Amen. From rebellion, from hatred, from a uh, conflict to peace and love. Your love now for the saints of God, for all the saints. You notice how the Holy Spirit words this. See, it is most people's choosing to say, I choose to love this one, but I don't like that one. Amen. I don't like this one, or uh, I don't agree with that one. Amen. That That's not what God's requiring out of us is to love. Amen. We must be always motivated and moved by the structure of the love of God. Amen. Gifting, ministry, lifestyle, everything has to be based upon the motivation. Amen. And the formality or the, uh, or the culture of the love of God. Amen. Loving one another is the Bible says that the world should know that we are his disciples by the love that we have one for another. Hallelujah. And Paul made some powerful statements. He said, man, it impacted me. I see. I've heard of your faith and I've heard of your love. It has made a powerful testimony to the, to believers and to unbelievers. Praise the Lord. See, people are watching us. People, people are watching you. There's people on your job. There's people on your, in your circles. They're, 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 they're watching you. Some, some may be doing it in a negative way, but they're still being attentive. Praise God. I, I don't, I don't mind if a person's critical. Praise the Lord, because truth will always stand. Never, never get in a way to where you become hostile and you become, amen, uh, in a way of it changes your, your loving nature to be hostile to others because they disagree with you or they, uh, attack you. Especially, uh, I'm talking about unbelievers. Praise the Lord, because they see they're in darkness. They don't understand. Praise the Lord. But 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 as long as we're doing and living our lives according to the word of God, according to the to the requirements of scripture and letting Christ be Lord and amen and his kingdom be manifested, then truth will always outweigh and outlast amen falsehoods. You do not listen to me good. This is important. You do not uh, lower your standards to fight against uh, opposing conflicts. Amen. Where there is no spoils. Praise the Lord. If it's false, you know, it's false. Just let it go. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't, don't, don't let it, don't let it get in your spirit. Don't let it get you ill and get you, uh, frustrated or get you angry at them. Because if you let those things in your spirit, it's going to begin to affect you personally and your walk with the Lord. And then this, then Satan wins. He's, He's, he's doing exactly what he wanted to do because he come to kill, steal, and destroy. 
He come to, 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 to set us at odds with one another. But Christ come to fill us with his love and to be, and for us to love as he has loved. And that their love was so strong and so impacted that Paul had heard about it. Amen. In his travels and others. Praise the Lord. See, I, I, I don't know about you, but my prayer, my desire is God, let me be a saint of God that the love of God that I serve, I serve you out of love. I serve others out of love. Let our actions be motivated by love. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, that doesn't mean that I, you just lay down in your footstool for anybody. That doesn't mean that you didn't take a stand for the word of God. Uh, that doesn't mean that, that if a person is speaking wrong or acting in the wrong way, that I just, I just accept it. No, we can, we can, we can oppose that, but do it in a, in the spirit of love and not out of the spirit of offense. Are, are y'all hear me? I ain't seeing many hearts, but I'm telling you, amen. This is what God's calling us to do. This is the challenge. Amen. That we should be asking ourselves, what is people, what, what does people know about us? What about how is our lifestyle and as a believer, our faith in Christ and our love, our example of love, of loving each other? Cause you can say you love people all day long, but if you don't put it in action, hallelujah, praise the Lord, it will never come to its fullness because love is an action word. Praise the Lord. And so Paul says, I've heard about you guys, man. I, I heard about the church in Ephesus, man. They're, they're full of faith. They, they, they're loving one another, which love will always cultivate a spirit of unity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And togetherness and community. When we, when we, when we begin to fall in love with each other and lift each other up and walk together in fellowship and unity, man, that Satan, that just, that messes Satan up because the kingdom of darkness can't stand that. Amen. And so Paul says, I've heard about you guys. He says in verse 16, he says, I cease not to give thanks for you. Paul says, your example is so powerful. I am praying and I'm saying, I am praying the prayer of thankfulness over you and over this church in Ephesus to say, thank God, somebody's uh, loving God. Somebody's loving one another. Amen. And, and we need, we need to catch an example of the, cause see, there's, there's things of God, you know, they're a real deal. Amen. They're, they're right. They're, they're serving God. They're walking in faith. They live by faith. Amen. They're strong. They're warriors. They're soldiers of the cross. They're loving one another and loving, loving, uh, uh, Christ. Praise God. And, and you need to pray for them. You, you need to be thankful because that example, see, we are where we are by the examples that others have set before us. Hallelujah. Praise God. The forefathers continue to preach the gospel through conflicts and attacks, you know, all through the year, hundreds of years until we, where we are now, the word of God. We have a privilege and opportunity now to do ministry because they were faithful and they were loving each other and, and working, endeavoring to keep the spirit of unity together. Because the enemy loves to scatter us and divide us and all these things. Paul says, I cease not on a continual basis in Paul's life. He says, I continually give thanks unto God for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Just think, just think, how is your life and my life impacting people around us? Hallelujah. Is our, is our testimony and our lifestyle of Christ and walking before the Lord uh, how are we known? Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Now listen, you always have negative. You always have negative, but you also will always have positive if you're doing the right and serving the Lord. Amen. And doing your very best. God will see to it that he will uphold you. Amen. And give you strength through all those attacks. Praise God. Don't, don't, don't worry about the namesakes. Don't worry about if false. The, the woe to the offenses will come, but the Bible says woe to those that offenses come through. Hallelujah. Praise God. There, there will always be people talking negative about you, disagree with you, find fault in you. Praise the Lord. But don't worry about that as long as it's not true. Don't you get caught up in that. And Paul encourages them in verse 16. This, I believe, was a motivation to some degree of Paul writing the book of Ephesians. Because Paul said, man, here's a group of people that love the Lord and they're walking in faith. 
Hallelujah. See, see, you don't, you should never mind imparting to people that you see the gifts, you see the fruit in their life. Amen. I, I know I, I'll give the shirt off my back uh, to a person that is trying and they're, and, and they're, they're loving God. See, you, you may not, may not have, uh, all the knowledge. You may not have this gift and that, but we can love. Praise God. Everybody can do that. And that's what's created in us. And so Paul says, making mention of you in my prayers. Paul says, I'm continually without ceasing praying for you. Hallelujah, man. That should, you know, you, you know what kind of encouragement that is that, the, the, to, to know that you have other, you have other people that see Christ in you, you know, and, and they're thankful for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. There's many of you, many, many that I know that I'm in relationship with, man. I am, and I tell you, I try to tell you this all the time. I'm thankful for you. I pray for you. Praise God. And, and, and uh, because I see the change in your life. I see, I see the growth in you. I see the anointing and the gifting and the purpose of God in your life. Many times that when you don't even see it yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. Leaders get that, that are mature and understand they can see, amen, things that maybe uh, others can't see at different times. So this is what Paul was saying. It was based a strong testimony. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and Paul says, I continue to make mention of you in my prayers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's, let's see the good in each other. Let, let our lives be in a testimony of faith and love. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So many are moved by titles and positions and, you know, uh, uh, being, uh, you know, in the forefront. Hallelujah. Praise God. But, you know, the, the greater you are, the more servants you should become. Because that's what real servanthood is. The more God works through your life and does in your life, the more that you should have a heart of servanthood in you to give and to serve others and to pour into other people's lives. So Paul says, I continue to make mention to you in my prayers. What a powerful testimony that Paul began now to see in this uh, the believers in Ephesus. And he writes this powerful, powerful book. And which is the book of Ephesians with great depth, great in, enlightenment. As we go through this book of uh, Ephesians, if you've never done a, a thorough study in the book of, uh, of Ephesians, man, you, you're in for a treat because it has, it's got meat after meat, depth after depth, principle, precept upon precept. Hallelujah. Man, it's some deep stuff, deep, profound, strong teaching. In the book of Ephesians. So, so Paul changes now in verses 17. I want to get to 17 and 18 here tonight, uh, and finish this up. And he, he begins to shift a little bit now because of what he saw. Amen. He wanted them to grow in their blessings. Paul wanted them to know God and experience the power of God. He saw their faith. He saw their love. But he, but he also saw that there was much more that God wants for their life. He, Paul, Paul begins to be, uh, in verses 17 begins to unfold, amen, about the growth of the blessings of God, of knowing God and experiencing the power of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Man, man, I, 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 I believe I told Sister Megan today that all of her posts, amen, um, that, uh, that, that, that she had come so far and I was so proud of her, but the best was yet to come. Amen. I believe that, Sister Megan. Amen. I believe that God has great things in store for your life and you that are watching tonight and those that will watch. I believe if you live faithfully for the Lord and, and walk in faith and love as Christ is love, man, it's unlimited what God can do and pour into your life. But Paul begins to help them to understand here's the next step now. From, for, for your growth. And it is the knowledge of God. This is so powerful. Look at verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit, amen, and this is a powerful verse, the spirit of wisdom, revelation, in the knowledge of him. In the knowledge of him. 
Now, the effects of verse 17, when you really grab hold of 17, it begins to uh, to do something unique in your life in verses 18. That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. In other words, the light comes on. Amen. That you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Man, there, this, I mean, I could stay on these two verses here for, for a long, long time. Amen. And I'm going to rush through them because there's this powerful, powerful stuff here that I want to make sure you catch. The great need for believers in verse 17 is that Paul helps us to understand is to grow in the knowledge of God. Amen. This is one of the most important, one of the high priority needs in our life is to grow in the knowledge of God. Get to know who he truly is. That God we are to know is clearly identified. He is not the God of our minds or our thoughts. The God we conceive when we look at pictures and all of these here things that people create. Amen. But God made uh, God made by man's minds and hands is the God of religion. Hallelujah. But that's not the true God. Here's a couple things. God that we know is the God of, of Jesus Christ, the Father of Jesus Christ and the God. That is the God whom Jesus Christ worshipped when he was on the earth as a man, the God whom Jesus Christ came to, came to reveal to men. See, one of Jesus' great responsibilities and assignments was to reveal to humanity who the Father is. Hallelujah. That's the reason when Jesus said this, if you, if no man has seen the Father, but if you've seen me, then you have seen the Father. By his own life and his own nature and who he showed himself to be and lived in the earth, uh, showed us who the Father was. His preaching, his teaching, his ministry, his life, his nature, how he conducted himself, showed us the nature of his father. Amen? If we really know God, we must know the God whom Christ worshipped and revealed, for he is the true God. The God we know is the father of glory, that is, the only true living God. You see, there's many gods, but there's only one true living God. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. So, so when, when, when people get into argument, oh, there's no more gods, there's no more gods. The Bible is very, very clear. There are many gods. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There's many that people has exalted, stones, monuments, and they declared him to be God. But I want you to understand there's only true, one true living God. There's only one Elohim. Elo, amen. The Elohim, the true God. Amen. There's only one. Praise the Lord. The supreme majesty and sovereign Lord of the universe, the one who is the supreme intelligent power in the universe and who has created all and rules over all, the one who is on, omnipotent, all-powerful, omnipresent, means present everywhere, who expands that, expand, expands that, that his very being and present reaches out beyond the stars and embraces all that is that is or will be the one who declares that he is amen the god this is god of who we know so he is a he is the only living and true god the father of jesus christ now there's three things here that we want to talk about is there are three um three things are essential if believers are to grow in the knowledge of god and remember these things are so important that paul prayed uh without ceasing to God to give them to the believers. And the number one is, first, to grow in the knowledge of God. Amen? A believer, to grow in the knowledge of God, a believer must have the spirit of wisdom. Woo! Hallelujah. Praise God. The spirit of wisdom. That's what Paul is teaching us, verse 7. To know who the truth, to know uh, the, truly who the Father is and know who truly God is, the Father of Jesus Christ, then you must have a spirit, the spirit of wisdom. Now, this phrase, spirit of wisdom, what the believer needs from God is a spirit, a spirit that reaches out and, and grasps uh, after wisdom. It chases after wisdom. 
You remember 2022, one of the, the word that we, we spoke, spoke, that God spoke over that 2022 will be a, a, a year of spiritual wisdom. Get wisdom. Spiritual wisdom. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a little bit of definition, a little bit about that. I mean, a spirit, we need a spirit of wisdom, a spirit that hungers and thirsts after wisdom. Amen. We need, we need to have a hunger and desire. I need wisdom, God. Man, if there's ever a time we need the spirit of wisdom, we need to be able to know it and apply it in our life. The spirit that seeks and seeks after wisdom. Wisdom can be best understood by single words, what and how. Hallelujah. What and how. Sarah, good to have you on tonight. Thanks for joining with us. So let's think about wisdom now. What and how. Wisdom means knowing what something is. Hallelujah. Having clarity of knowing what it is. In this case, having a spirit of wisdom means that I have a what. I know what something is. I know that God is the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's a sovereign God, only true living God, without a shadow of that. And, 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 and what is behind something? The how. Hallelujah. What is behind God? What is his motivation? Is his love. Hallelujah. He loves you and I so much that he sent his only begotten son. Hallelujah. And what can be done? It is knowing how to use or relate to something. Hallelujah. To have spiritual wisdom is knowing how to use, apply. I always say it like this. I mean, the wisdom is knowing how to apply what you have or what you know in full revelation of understanding. Now, I know this, and now how do I use that? Hallelujah. It takes wisdom to be able to do that. Praise God. Therefore, spiritual wisdom means this, knowing God is and how to relate to him. Praise the Lord. How do, let's talk about that a little bit. Having spiritual wisdom means, okay, how do I, I know that he is God and how do I relate to him? Praise the Lord. God is our father. He's not a judge. He's, he's not our judge. Listen, your sin, your judgment is already been placed upon Christ. Christ bore our sins. Amen. The chastisement of our peace were upon his shoulders. For all humanity has access now that, that it could come to the Father. See, J Jesus comes seeking to save that which was lost. He, he, through the love of the Father, and, th and this is spiritual wisdom. We need to make sure we, ha we know we have spiritual wisdom. We know how to relate to him. We, he is our Father, our spiritual Father. He is our Creator. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. He loves you and I. There's nothing to be afraid. Don't, don't uh, the Bible, when the Bible speaks about fear of the Lord, it's talking about reverence. It's not talking about, I'm afraid of God. Hallelujah. See, there's many, there's many been trying, people, uh, believers trying to get other people to come to the Lord by scaring them. Hallelujah. Facts now, facts is, is there a hell? Yes. If you reject Jesus Christ, is there any hope for salvation? None. Amen. That, that's not trying to, to, to scare anybody. But that's facts of truth. Praise the Lord. Amen. But we need to understand that he says, whomsoever will, let him come. Hallelujah. God is through his son is, amen, with outstretched arms saying, whomsoever will, he, let him come. So how do you think about this for yourself? Do you know who God is and how to relate to him? Second is knowing the truth and how to use it. Hallelujah. Knowing the truth. The Bible says that Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. The Jesus is truth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> there you go, Heather. Praise the Lord. Worship like God. If God don't do something wrong. Praise the Lord. Amen. That, that's, that's not, that's not the true, uh, relationship. We have a loving father son relationship and we should know how, uh, to relate to him because he certainly knows how to relate to us. Knowing the truth and then how to use it. How many of you know the word of God is God's uh, infallible truth? Hallelujah. Jesus is truth. He is the living word and he is the written word. Hallelujah. He, it is, he is the ream of God. In the beginning was the word, the word was God, and he is the logos of God. The manifest manifestation of the rema. The logos is now the thought of God, the intent of God, the nature of God being revealed, which is logos. Hallelujah. Amen. And Jesus came to show us the logos. 
In uh, other words, who the Father is by who he is. He shows us the Father. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit will only testify unto Christ. Praise God. So you got no truth. You got See, if you know truth, then you're not easily swayed in error. Hallelujah. And how many of you know the Bible, the truth of God's word will work if you work it? <laughs> Hallelujah. But if you don't know it, you can't use it. Hallelujah. And there's many believers that are weak. Many believers are being bombarded. Many believers are being drugged through the mud. Satan trying to destroy their life, attacking their life and their family, their marriage, their faith, attacking everything. He, cause he, that's what he does. He kills, steals, and destroys. Amen. Because they don't know truth and they don't know how to use it. Hallelujah. Number three, knowing what to do and how to do it. Knowing what to do and how to do it. Man, this is, this is some good stuff right here. Hallelujah. Do you know what to do? Hallelujah. Do, do you know what to do when circumstances arise? Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Do, do, do you know how to handle when, when conflict arises? See, uh, here's a, here's a, I'm going to give you a little, uh, a little insight to me, uh, stoning for many, many years. Hallelujah. I measure, I do not measure my maturity level by what people say. Hallelujah. I measure my own maturity. Where am I at in maturity and in growth? Hallelujah. I measure that. One of the ways that I measure mine is how I handle conflict. How do I handle bad circumstances? How do I handle it when I get my feelings hurt? How do I handle it when someone talks about it? All those things are hurtful. All those things that, 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 that can, can hurt you deeply. But how, how do you, how do I respond? This is talking about stoning now. Do I get upset? Do I, do I react? Do, do, do I want to do, do, do I act in an ungodly way? Do I say, uh, ungodly truth, uh, start, gossiping or spending, spreading bad news, whatever the case may be, uh, character. There you go, Megan. Amen. So I measure my maturity level by my responses. Hallelujah. Cause the Bible says if a man judge himself, there's no need for another man to judge him. In other words, well, you should know where you are at. Hallelujah. And then when, 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 when some, when truth comes and it finds you, then you're not offended by it. Says, well, yeah, that's that's an area that I need to grow in, and I'm I'm working on that. Amen. Praise God. That maybe that what that person shared, or what was spoken, or what was preached, will help me better, help me in that particular area of my life. Because we all are has areas of improvement. None of us are perfect yet. We're working towards perfection in Christ Jesus. Amen. But we are not perfect. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are working. Number number four. Knowing how to live more and more fruitful lives for the glory of God and for the welfare of men. More is needed. A person must know how to use facts. Hallelujah. Knowledge is the grasping of facts. Listen to me now. Hallelujah. So he says, the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation, spirit of knowledge. Hallelujah. I'm not, I, I haven't skipped revelation yet. I'm, I'm coming, I'm, we're coming to it. I'm just helping you see something. Knowledge is the grasping, understanding of facts. By grasping facts is not enough. Um, much more is needed. A person must know how to use facts. In other words, what is truth? That is what wisdom, this is where wisdom comes in. Wisdom knows how to use the facts. The point is, is this. It is not enough to know the facts about God. A person must Know God personally. Hallelujah. See, people know of God. They even know the facts of God. They even know, see, and know the works of God. But they can know in the facts about God is not good enough. The only way you can truly know God is to have a relationship with him. And you know what? Jesus came that you and I can have a relationship with the Father. Hallelujah. We could be restored back in our rightful place as sons and daughters of God. Is this making any sense? I see a few hearts, but I hope you're catching. You must know how to, uh, to experience the facts about God. You must use the facts to develop a personal relationship with God, God, growing your relationship. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Tracy, good to see you. Revelation, the relationship that is uh, uh, intimate, that grows deeper and deeper. So you gotta, you gotta work on your relationship and it comes by knowing the Lord. It becomes, I want to know you. I want to know you, God. Hallelujah. The Bible says Moses was, God spoke of Moses as a friend of God, but Moses had, had great conversation and great encounters with Christ. Even, you know, uh, when Lot and them, Sodom, Sodom Gomorrah was destroyed. That was Christ incarnated that he, he spoke to and to, uh, the two angels. But, but, but listen, Moses had a deeper, deeper desire of intimacy. And he says, M Moses, no one can look upon me and live. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. See, see, in our relationship with Christ, through Christ, it, 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 as we work on it and deepen and grow in our relationship, we get more knowledge of who he is. Hallelujah. See, see, when I first got saved, I knew him as my, 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 uh, as a savior. Hallelujah. I knew the Lord and the Father as He saved me at, from, at, that I was a sinner, and now thank God I'm saved. And as I begin to grow and walk and build my relationship, I got to know about His grace. I got to understand His merited favor towards me and 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 mercy, keeping and sparing for me what I deserve. That's what mercy is, and grace is is giving me what I don't deserve. <laughs> Hallelujah, Amen. And then as I begin to grow and mature and walk. Amen. And develop our relationship. I begin to know about worship. Amen. Coming in intimacy. Hallelujah. With a living God that created the universe, but yet he comes and sits and visits with us and communes with us through the Holy Spirit. How, are, are you seeing me? Amen. This is what, this is what he's talking about. The spirit of wisdom, knowledge and knowing how, who he really is. A personal intimacy. If a believer is to grow in the knowledge of God, he must seek wisdom of God more than anything else on the earth. It is the person who hungers and thirsts after God and his righteousness that is filled. Hallelujah. Let us have a deeper desire. Let us have a, a spirit of wisdom. I want to take what who he is and I want to know how to, to apply truths and to walk in a way that is pleasing to show forth his glory in the earth. I want others to know him. Hallelujah. By my life that others might say, man, there's something Stoney's got something. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because most of you that are on here, you know my testimony. I was, I was a messed up man, drugged, alcohol, all messed up. Hallelujah. But thanks be unto God through Jesus Christ. Amen. He gave us e eternal life through his son, Jesus Christ. Listen, I want to read a scripture to you in James chapter five. It says this. If any man lack wisdom, I just talked to you a little bit about the spirit of wisdom. Let him ask of God that giveth all men liberally and unbridled not, and it shall be given unto him. In other words, he said, if you seek, you shall find, asking you shall receive, knocking it shall be open to you. If you want more wisdom, the, the, the spiritual wisdom, then ask of God. It's James 3.17 says, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, peaceable. Now watch this. You need to jot this scripture down. It's James chapter 3, verse 17. This gives you a description of character of wisdom. Watch this. Wisdom is, is that, wisdom that is from above or spiritual wisdom is first pure, genuine. Hallelujah. It's, 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 it's pure. It's not, it's not a mixture. In other words, then it is peaceable. Amen. See, real spiritual wisdom will bring you to a place of peace, like, like, like that will blow your mind. Un, 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 you know, just can't comprehend the peace of God. Gentle. Hallelujah. And easy to be intrigued. Praise the Lord. Easily to be drawn by his love and his passion to us. It's, amen. Y'all with me? This, this, this is a powerful verse. I, a matter of fact, I, I'd love for you, if you would, that you need to take time and, and break down every one of these character natures about wisdom. Purity. Peaceful, gentle, easily to be intrigued. In other words, lured. In other words, drawn close. God says, 
in wisdom, that person in spiritual wisdom, that, that, that the Holy Spirit can woo them, that can draw them to the presence of God. Hallelujah. And we won't be resisted. We won't be a stubborn and hard headed and amen, selfish and all this. Sister Joanne, good to see you, girl. Amen. Intrigued. Watch this. Full of mercy. Woo. Hallelujah. And good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. Woo. Hallelujah. See, these are, he says, but the wisdom that is from above is first these things. Do a word study. Take every one of those descriptions of wisdom. Break it down into Greek. Amen. Do word studies on it. Get a depth of what he's trying to really teach us in the book of James. It is powerful. It'll, it, it'll change your thoughts and understanding about wisdom. So first thing Paul says here, amen, that you must know him, know the father of Jesus Christ and the, glo the father of glory Unto you, the spirit of wisdom. Hallelujah. Now, number two, he says, and revelation. Praise God. Listen, I, I, ain't, <laughs> I ain't got about 15 minutes left. Number two, to grow in the knowledge of God, a believer must have us have the spirit of revelation. Brother Anthony, man, good to see you, bro. You can watch it later. Amen. Cause you, you need, you need to catch this here. There's some good stuff here, I believe. So, A. Again, note the phrase, spirit of revelation. It is the Holy Spirit who reveals God to the believer. This is made abundantly clear by scripture. Watch this now. First Corinthians, write this down. First Corinthians chapter two, verses nine through 12. First Corinthians two, nine, chapter two, verse nine through 12. I'm going to read it to you. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard Neither have entered in the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them. Woo, come on somebody. Hallelujah. See, so he tells us in, in, the, in this verse, uh, what is this? Verse nine, he tells us, eyes are not seen, ears are not heard. It's not even in the, you, can, you can't even imagine it. You can't even comprehend it. He said, but. God has revealed it unto us by his spirit. <laughs> what eyes could not see, spiritually you can see. What ears could not hear, spiritually you can hear it. Ooh, for the spirit searches all things. Hallelujah, all things. See, for the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. Hallelujah. Watch this now. He said it searches all things. In other words, it, it, the Holy Spirit searches out. Hallelujah. The mysteries and the understandings and the nature and the heart of God, the things of God. It searches for. In other words, other words, it, it's continually moving us. Amen. From faith. It searches all things. Yea, the deep things of God. Woo, hallelujah. Amen. Can I tell you, amen, God's got things in store for your life that's going to blow your mind. Hallelujah. But you got to get a hunger. You got to get a desire. You got to say, I want that spirit of wisdom and I want the spirit of revelation. I want to know. Hallelujah. For what man knoweth, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Now we have received. Now he's talking to us as believers. You need to prophesy that. At you. you need to speak that in your own life. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. I'm in the world, but not of the world. The spirit of the world, amen, is controlled by the, the, the demonic forces of the kingdom of darkness, amen, of hatred and murder and falling and backsliding and death and murder. Man, look at the stuff that is going on in our world, amen. But the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Woo-hoo, hallelujah. Man, that is, that scripture right there is off the chain. The believer is indwelled by the Spirit of God. 
For if you have not the Spirit of God, then you're none of His. You cannot be born again and have a relationship with, with, with the Father without the Holy Spirit abiding in your life. Cannot happen. Amen. Hallelujah. But how many of you know, amen, just because the Holy Spirit abides in you as a believer, that there's more, there's more that God has for you. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Revelation. The believer is, to, is indwelled by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God dwells in him to teach him the deep things of God. Woo! See, see, Jesus said the Holy Spirit will teach you all things whatsoever I have said. Jesus said, I never say or do anything that I haven't heard from my Father. So the actions of Jesus was a direct revelation from his Father. The Holy Spirit will only teach you and I the revelation from Christ. <laughs> Come on, somebody, stay with me. Hallelujah. But note, what the believer must have in order to grow in the knowledge of God is a spirit of revelation. Amen. A spirit that drives after God. A hunger and a drive. See, the church is based upon a spirit of revelation. Flesh and blood are not revealed in these, my Father, which is in heaven. Peter, you hear, you hear me quote that scripture, that, that scripture all the time. Why? Because it's the birth of the church. Hallelujah. And it's through the spirit of revelation. Hallelujah. Now, I'll teach you just in a moment, give you some definition about this. Then the, uh, and the spirit of revelation that seeks to know God. See, the spirit of revelation is not to get us deep truths and intellectualism. Hallelujah. And, and, and spirits, familial spirits. See, there are people and ministers in our pulpits around through our churches today, in, in congregations today, that is moving through familiar spirits. Because they're, they're moving through uh, a, 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 a hunger and a desire of a head knowledge. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's humanism. That's a spirit of deception uh, uh, that the enemy is working. To deceive people. Because the spirit of revelation seeks to know God. Hallelujah. And seeks to know who he is. A spirit that hungers and thirsts after God above all else. Now watch this. The word revelation means to manifest, to reveal, to unveil, to uncover, or to open. It is the Holy Spirit. It is the work of the Holy Spirit to reveal the knowledge of God to Christians. That's the reason the Bible says, amen, the Holy Spirit. Uh, when you have the Holy Spirit, there's no man cannot teach you anything. Hallelujah. Because man, in intellectual mindset of man, human intellect, even though man is a very smart, smart being, God created man very intellectual, but it is not human through human human intellectual that man can catch and understand who God is. See, the, the, when you felt uh, the the uh, I you know I need to change the life I need help God I, and begin to turn to the Lord. It was not through your intellect. It was not through your human desire. It was through the working of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah! The Holy Spirit. You know, Sister Ann Morton. Good to see you in Albemarle. Good to have you, girl. And so, so in fact, it is the work of the Holy Spirit to reveal the meaning of all truth to Christians. It is the work of the Holy Spirit that reveals all truth to us. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible says that's, that's the reason there's no need for man to teach you. No, for, for no, no man to teach you. Because man in his, uh, in their own intellects can, cannot teach you the things of God. Because the things of God has to be come through the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit really, uh, uncovers or works through the spirit of revelation to unveil, to uncover, to open. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you know that there's not another, there's no more new word? Hallelujah. The Bible is finished. Hallelujah. The book is closed. What God has said, God has already said. Matter of fact, there's a, there's a punishment that those that will add, take away from this book or add to this book. Amen. God's directly. See, see, when Paul talks about the mysteries of the church, 
It was because, it, uh, and talks about mysteries in the word of God. It, it talks about that it was covered up. God has it, it not yet came to its time or for a uh, time of revelation for God to unveil it. It wasn't that God created something new. Oh, God, I got to create this here because they, they, they need this. No, every, Jesus was slain before the foundations of the earth, but it's not revealed until it's right season and time. Oh, y'all ain't catching me. Come on, somebody. That's the reason why, you know, that's the reason why the spirit of the enemy, he wants us to chase after deep truths. Amen. And stumble on 101 faith. Because it's chasing humanism. It's chasing man's uh, mind of intellect. Smart man, smart man. There ain't nothing wrong with being education. I ain't talking about Man, you know, uh, that, that person being educated is wrong. I'm not, I know, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying is man in his own nature, in human nature, cannot reveal the truths of God. It takes, it has to come through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. And this is one of the major works of what the enemy is doing. He, he, he is deceiving many with humanism. I call it humanism, meism, man's intellect, man's way, man's thought. Ooh, I got a, I got a deep new revelation. Amen. No, you ain't got nothing new. You, God may have revealed you and let you say, seen something different or see it in a different way. Amen. But you ain't created nothing new. See, there's many religions built upon a man getting a vision. Hallelujah, Jehovah Witnesses. John Smith was sitting on a tree and got a vision of God. Hallelujah. Many other false religions is formed upon revelation, a form of humanism of revelation. But true revelation can only be revealed through the Holy Spirit. This is clearly seen in 1 Corinthians 19 and 16, where the wisdom of the world is, is, is in contrast uh, uh, with the wisdom of God. A spiritual Christian sees through the spirit revealing to him the meaning behind the world events as well as day-to-day -day experiences. He understands who, watch this, catch this now, make sure you hear this. As a believer, through the Holy Spirit, he understands who and what is behind the events of history and human experience. Therefore, he gains a growing knowledge of God day by day. Hallelujah. See, see, through the spirit of revelation, through the spirit of wisdom, I have a, I have a knowing. I have a, I know, I know that the steps of a man is ordered. I'm, I'm, I'm out, I'm out of time. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I, God knows I hate to quit right here. Praise the Lord. Uh, praise God. Cause it's just, to me, it's so good. It's so good to understand. Amen. And this is why religion it is, is fought so hard because that's the spirit of the enemy. Uh, it's fought so hard to suppress revelation. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, because it is through the form of, of flesh. It's through the form of uh, religion is man's deeds. Hallelujah. Praise God. Man did this. Man built this sanctuary. Man built this order. And I do these things to to pop themselves and to exalt themselves. Hallelujah. Amen. But see, the Holy Spirit is the only one that can give us true revelation of truth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And a spirit of revelation hungers after to know him and it drives us to seek God and to know him more and more and more. Praise the name of the Lord. And it moves us from faith to faith, from to glory to glory as we walk in maturity and God revealing and uncovering to us the truths about who he is. Hallelujah. So, see, so I, I've met, I've met Christians that seem and said that, that, you know, the Bible is boring. I don't understand. It. Well, you, you know, you, and they act, and many of them act like that they're walking their their relationship with the Lord. Being a Christian is boring. I'm telling you, let me tell you something, man. Yeah, man, I I'm on the best. I'm I, I and listen. This is the greatest party I ever been a part of. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. 
Amen. When I get to know him in one dimension, he reveals to me through maturity, and through revelation, another dimension of who he is. Hallelujah. And every new, every uh, uh, un unveiled uh, revelation of Christ. See, G what's this? The revelation that Jesus told Peter that he had received from heaven, from his father in heaven, was revelation of Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And, and so I, I, I got I to gotta quit. But I hope you're catching this tonight. This verse 17 is so powerful. And Paul says, this is, this is what's stirring me because I see your faith. I see your love for one another. Now it's time for you to, to go to an, a, a, a new step and go a little further. Hallelujah. In spiritual wisdom, spiritual revelation and the knowledge of him. Hallelujah. Now we'll go back and finish. Dive back into this. I thought maybe I might would get through with these here three verses, <laughs> four verses or whatever. But I see I didn't. Amen. But I hope it was a blessing for you tonight. Listen, I love you. I pray for you. Be blessed. Do your homework. Study James chapter 3 verse 17. Study 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 12. These scriptures, amen, and get it. Pray, say, Say, God, I want spiritual wisdom. I'm hungering after wisdom. Seek after. I want the spirit of revelation. Show me. Amen. Reveal and uncover to me the truths of who you are. Amen. And by knowing him, you get a true indicator of who you are in him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And when you catch that, when you get when you get this spirit of revelation in you and this birth inside of you and you get a true understanding of who he is and and what he's done and and who you are in him man the devil's in trouble hallelujah amen see you're not a victim you're victorious though you have been walked through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me See, you are not the tail, you are the head. Hallelujah. Circumstance in the world tells you you're going down. There ain't no hope. Amen. It's too much. The, be the debts are too, I can't make my payments. I, I'm, I'm running short on this and I'm getting, I'm getting, uh, so much anxiety and worry. Amen. Because you don't, you're, you're not walking in revelation. Revelation is, is what Jesus said, cast your cares upon me. It is not the will of God for you to walk with anxieties. Amen. Because most of what you're worried about, you can't change no way. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. That's in the hand of God. Amen. And the steps of a good man is ordered by God. That means God's already set it in concrete. He's already before you. He's already placed things in, your, in, in the arenas of your life, in your path. Though the enemy may set up a snare against you. Amen. When the enemy comes in like a flood, my God, I'm trying to quit. When the enemy comes in like a flood, he will raise up a standard against him. But see, you got to know it. Amen. And have wisdom to apply that. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to close with this. I know I'm over, but let me close with this little story that, 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 that did really bless me. He said this, this woman one time, they say it's a true story. I don't know, but I heard it and it really inspired me. He said this woman was praying and she was known in her community. Amen. As a, as a believer, as a Christian, she got to, got to in a tight situation and she didn't have any food and, amen, things that got really tight, really tight, really hard for her. But her neighbor's side of her was an atheist, amen, and he, 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 didn't, he didn't believe in God. He said there was no God, amen, but uh, the story goes on to say that this woman was praying and just believed God, that God was going to supply her need according to his riches and glory because that's what the word, the word promises us. Amen. I supply all your needs, all your needs. God takes, God will take care of his own. And so she was praying and just walking in faith and believing. And the story goes on to say that this atheist man, he went to the grocery store and bought a whole bunch of food, bags and bags of groceries. And he brought it and put it on her doorsteps at her door. Amen. And he stood off over in the edge of the, the woods there. 
And she opened the door and she, she opened and he saw, saw the, the bags of groceries. She began to praise the Lord and just shout and give the Lord the glory and praise. Amen. And, and this atheist man, he stepped out from behind the bushes and he said, see there, it was not your God that brought these groceries. It was me. He said, and look at you, you're praising him and he didn't do nothing. And the woman stopped praising God and he said, let me see, let me share with you. I'm praising God because God used a atheist, amen, an unbeliever, amen, to bring me my groceries. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Man, that thing, I heard that story. That thing tickled me. I was like, boy, that's just like God. He said he'll prepare you a table in the presence of your enemies. Hallelujah. Listen, be encouraged. Be strengthened. Praise the Lord. In the spirit of revelation, God wants to reveal himself to you. Amen. That you may know him in deeper depths than ever before in a personal, intimate way. Amen. For his glory. Father, we thank you for our time tonight. We thank you, Lord, for your word. I hope it was a blessing. I pray that the grace of God will strengthen your people. We pray tonight, Lord, we hunger for the spirit of wisdom, amen, to know what and how. Lord, we pray for the spirit of revelation and the spirit of knowledge. Father, fill us for your, with your glory that we may be a people, amen, that our testimony, our life, may speak of the nature and the heart of Christ. Let our light shine that others might see you, Lord. We bless your people. We encourage them. We decree your blessings and safety over their life. If you are for us, who can be against us? We bless you and we say thank you for the people of God. We love them, Lord. Bless them and encourage them today. In Jesus' name we pray. Listen, thank you for joining tonight. I hope it was a blessing. Listen, share it, like it, like it, share it if you will. I would appreciate it. Let others send it to some folks. Let them know. Amen. Somebody needs to hear this word tonight. Praise the Lord. And I hope it was a blessing to you. Thank you for being on live. Great host of folks on tonight. See those hearts just going and going and going. We love you. Listen, I could, I could say and teach to you for two or three hours. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. But I know your time's valuable and I love you. I appreciate you for your time being with us tonight. May God ever bless you and keep you and be encouraged. For he's soon coming. And amen. Let's be ready. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you.